Hi everyone. I don't know are you guys in mood for Valentine's Day or not, but I sure am. I love to decorate and fix food and things for Valentine's Day. I plan to incorporate our little cottages into this video. And for those of you new to my channel, last summer we built some cottages that we rent out and they are called Old Orchard Cottages, like our location is called that. And then there's two cottages, one is Apple Blossom and one is Sparrow's Nest. And I thought, how fun would it be to actually do a little special during the month of February with the cottages and then kind of deck them out or maybe not deck them out but just add little touches of Valentine's Day in every room. So in this video I hope to first of all give you guys some inspiration to maybe add your own Valentine's Day touches in your home. Um, it's amazing how little it takes to just bring a spark of color or cheer into a room, maybe bring a smile to someone's face. And secondly, maybe you're wanting to plan a trip to our area and need a place to stay. So what I plan to do is give you guys a discount during the month of February in case you decide to do that. And I know you're probably thinking, what is there to do in Holmes County in February? But trust me, there is actually a lot going on. Sure, the weather might be pretty bleak and gray, but there's tons of things to see and do. And I'll share more on that later. But for now, let's get right into some of the decorating uh, some of the things I'm fixing up and then also a few food ideas and then I'll take you over to the cottages and kind of fix them up in the way that I plan to have them during the month of February. That way you kind of know what to expect if you decide to plan a trip. And I do have a promo code that I'll be giving you for $50 off per night. I'll share more on that towards the end of the video as far as how to use the code. So stay tuned for that if you're interested. But for now, let's just enjoy some decorating. I wanted a heart-shaped wreath in each cottage and I wanted them to be different from each other. Um, so I found this set of two wire wreath forms from Amazon. I'll link them down below in the description box in case you're looking for an inexpensive uh, wire wreath, but I'm pretty sure you can probably find them in craft stores and maybe even Walmart. The first one here, I'm cutting off sections of this florist foam. I'm gonna tuck it into the form. Maybe I'll end up using hot glue to keep it in place, not sure. On second thought, instead of using glue, I think I'll use these little twisty ties that came with the wreath. I saw on Pinterest where you can do this, uh, you know, then use fake flowers and stick it into the foam to create your wreath. We'll see how it goes. Um, these flowers do also come from Amazon. It's always kind of hard to find, you know, real looking roses, but thought I'd give these a shot. Uh, of course, you know, the pictures always looked a little better than they actually do in real life, but maybe once they're on the wreath and kind of put together, they're gonna look okay, hopefully. As you can see, I'm saving this wire that was inside these stems. It's such a nice size. Pretty sure I'll use it in future projects. Right away I could tell I would probably not have quite enough flowers to fill this wreath. So here I'm using some faux eucalyptus that I had around here and filling in some of the spaces. I plan to use strips of fabric and just tie it onto the form. Um, I've done this before with a round wreath but never with a heart shaped one and I do know it's really time consuming but I think it's going to look kind of cute once it's finished. It has that kind of raggedy look with the frayed fabric. Um, here I'm just tearing pieces of the fabric into strips and the fabric I'm using is drop cloth and then I have a white uh, kind of like a lace that I had bought years ago and still have some leftover 
and then I also have a red and white stripe one. Basically just tying it onto the wreath and I'll probably trim it down once I have everything finished or maybe section by section. Pebbles of course once on my lap. The minute I sit down I thought I'd find a comfortable place to sit and do this being that it takes some time and I of course am not able to hold her while I'm doing this. I got one of their I have these Turkish towels that I use for my cats. They're not really allowed on our furniture uh, without being on something else besides our you know, blankets and pillows. So I'll put that underneath her, see if it works. I love walking into a room and seeing a fresh bouquet of flowers. It just brings so much cheer. That's my plan for both cottages to have you know, fresh bouquets, maybe sitting on the island. One of the first things you see when you come in. So here I created a vintage rose design that I printed off on transfer paper, like an iron-on transfer paper. And I'm wanting to make a table runner with this design on either end of the runner. I trimmed off the excess paper and then here I'm peeling off the design. And I'll be using parchment paper to you know, iron this on. I'm not ironing directly onto the image, of course. And here I have my Cricut heat press. I love this thing. I haven't talked about it lately here on my channel, but um, I do have a Cricut link down below in the description box if you wanna check it out. But if you enjoy crafting, this is definitely something you wanna have. I'll probably make two of these table runners, one for each cottage. I plan to have a little tablescape fixed up for the guests when they arrive at the cottages. And I thought a table runner would be a really nice touch. We decided to make this table runner for the Etsy shop. So if you're looking for something like this, uh, head on over and check it out. So with this Cricut press, you basically just press the button. Uh, previously, you know, I had set it to, uh, I'm gonna press one minute, and the temperature is 280. I may end up doing more than a minute, but I'm gonna start out with that. I wanted the mantles to have some Valentine's Day decorations on them, and I found these signs in Dollar General for a really good price. I realized they're not real wood, even though they kind of look that way. I thought about going out in the shop and just making my own or getting John to help me, but we've been really busy out there and almost don't have the time. So 
this will definitely help me out even though it's not you know the real wood but it still kind of has the look of what I'm going for I probably won't use all of these in this video but I can always save them for future projects I plan to use one of the square signs and then one of the rectangle ones on the one mantle together and then just a separate square one for the other one so I really just need three here and I think I'll be able to pop out the canvas part of the sign and then for my set of two I'm gonna go ahead and paint actually paint it white to just get my background white and then for the single square one I think I have a piece of tack board here that I'm just gonna put in I would probably use this tack board method for all of them if I had enough but being that I don't I'll just paint them I was halfway through spray painting these and when I remembered one of you guys actually sent me one of those uh, spray gun holder things something you clip on the top of a spray can I'm gonna try that I haven't even tried it yet I can't believe the difference in spray painting guys you definitely need one of these like my hand often gets kind of stiff and sore from if I spray paint too long and this just did the job um, it's so comfortable to use I'm pretty sure I won't paint without this thank you I think it was John and Dana if I'm correct not quite sure I do I have the names right but you know who you are thank you for this I really appreciate it definitely made my life a little easier just now I talk about these decor transfers a lot in my videos but I absolutely love them and I'll leave a link down below in the description box from the Etsy shop that I buy them from um, they have really good prices and a speedy service which I'm always impressed with I feel like my whole crafting creative life has changed since I discovered these uh, they're so much fun to use um, here I'm just using various pieces from a set that I had gotten like they don't necessarily belong together but you can put them together however you wish whatever looks good to you and for this one of course I want I like that the word love is on here and then I want some pink flowers I think this combination will look really Valentine's Day ish the mantles I plan to add these cute little wooden hearts and these were cut out by my cousin Michael I've talked about him before how we get a lot of our wooden cutouts from him he has a large CNC router where he can cut out these designs and he of course uses real wood this is not some kind of compressed plywood or anything this is actual pine wood we will have these available on the Etsy shop as little cutouts exactly like this unsanded unfinished and you could create your own design whether it be you know to paint them stain them you know add some words paper mod podge there's just endless what you could do with them I think they're so cute and some of you may remember last year we had some stained hearts like the conversation hearts at this point I'm not quite sure are we going to have those this year or not and I will let you know soon in a video if we do but they were in really high demand last year but they were kind of hard to get those words on so not quite sure we thought about maybe using our laser burner to do it and I just haven't had the time to check it out to see if I can actually do that or not but definitely we'll keep you updated but for now we do have the unfinished available here I'm just using a glue stick to glue this paper onto the heart now the other option would of course be to use Mod Podge but I think for this project a glue stick will do
here I'm using my favorite color of pink to paint four of these hearts and the color is called Malted Milk. I have used it before in my videos and it's just always my go-to paint around Valentine's Day especially. Um, it's just such a pretty color I think. some twigs in the woods that I want to spray paint white and then I plan to hang little hearts on them. I plan to use paper for my hearts and here I have all kinds of pink paper and some of this you guys actually sent me. Um, I'm always just blown away by this. First of all, thank you for sending me stuff. Uh, you really wouldn't have to but I really appreciate it. It's always fun to receive things and the thing that always amazes me most is you guys know exactly what I like. Like I don't think I've ever gotten anything that I didn't like. Um, it's just amazing how we probably have the same taste or something but uh, these are just beautiful papers, uh, kind of vintagey feel to them. I think they would be really fitting for Valentine's Day. After I cut out the hearts I glued them together like I wanted both sides to be pink. Here I'm folding the hearts in half, gluing two of them together, adding baker's twine in between for hanging. And this twine I got off of Amazon, I thought it's such a pretty color of pink. I'll link it down below in the description box in case you're looking for something like this. Here I'm tucking newspaper into my vase to hold my little branch in place. And I'll probably wait to hang my little hearts until I have them over there in the cottages. I made two more signs that I'll probably end up using on a wall somewhere. You guys have seen this process many times before, but just using my Silhouette Cameo to cut out my decals and then applying them onto the sign. And these decals will be available on the Etsy shop in case you want to make your own. I got these little foam balls off of Amazon. Here I'm stringing them using regular thread. I could not find my string that I really wanted. It would be a little thicker than this, but I think this should work. This is a fairly strong thread. At this point, I'm not even quite sure where I'm gonna put it, maybe by the mantle or the corner of a picture frame, but I think it'll just make a cute little decoration for Valentine's Day. I'm also planning on making little body butters for our guests and I'll probably put it like in the bathroom along with a homemade bath bomb, uh, some homemade soap. Um, it'll just be fun to fix up that space too with just a touch of Valentine's Day. I even found some pretty pink towels that I plan to use during the month of February. I really debated making a homemade bubble bath but I wasn't quite sure the rules on Jetta tubs if you're actually allowed to use that or not. I know some kinds you probably aren't. It could maybe ruin your tub. I thought I'll just stick to bath bombs. I have this recipe that I really like. As you can see, I'm freezing the body butter mixture before I whip it up. And good news here, I'm going to have extra body butter here that I'll sell on the Etsy shop. So if you want to try an all natural, really great smelling, fresh smelling pink grapefruit scent, uh, this will be tinted to a light pink color. Uh, check that out on the Etsy shop. I'm going to make some heart shaped bath bombs. I thought that would be a really cute touch. 
and I'll share my recipe down below in the description box in case you want to make these exact same ones although there's tons of recipes out there that I'm sure are just as good but I do know this one normally has a really good fizz to it first I mix my baking soda Epsom salts the Himalayan pink sea salt and the citric acid together I melted some coconut oil I'm gonna mix that with polysorbate not sure am I pronouncing that correctly and the fragrance oil I'm planning on using is Roses and Peony. It's one of my favorites. I thought it would be really fitting being that I plan to use some dried rose petals with these. Turns out the mold was too flexible. I wasn't able to pack the ingredients in hard enough that they would hold together. I was able to get a few of them out without breaking them, but I think come February I'd have to go another route if I end up making you know, a number of these bombs. I want to fix a simple yet pretty charcuterie board for the guests. I saw on Pinterest where you can make these salami roses. Never done it before. See how it goes here. I didn't have any dipping chocolate on hand and I wanted to dip the tops of these strawberry hearts so I'm just using melted chocolate chips which doesn't always work the best but uh, just to get the look we want here. So I'm ready to head on over to the cottages. Of course the lighting isn't very great today. It's been this way for a number of days, just this gray bleak weather. I uh, don't want to complain but it's always a little bit depressing I gotta say and then of course if you want to do any sort of filming um, it's hard to you know get some good natural light if it's dark like this but we'll do the best we can so we'll fix up sparrow's nest first so unfortunately by the time i went to do my actual video shoot over here at the cottages my little pink flowers weren't very nice anymore so i ended up stopping at petals and company it's a florist in berlin ohio and she has some really pretty flowers and she gave me a great deal for these roses that I'm going to use here in the video. And I'll probably have something similar here during the month of February from her. Again, Petals and Company. And if you're local, make sure to check her out. She always has pretty flowers and there's, she always has good service too. I do want pink flowers when it comes to fixing this all up for February. But today I have red ones being that she didn't have very many pink ones on hand. At least we can still see how it'll look with a fresh bouquet of flowers on the island. I'm planning on pretty much fixing up things the way it's going to be in February, but already I thought of a few other things I'm probably going to add. So whatever you see here will probably be here, plus maybe some other things. Uh, we do have some really pretty pillows that I think would look good on maybe the sofas, and even a nice throw that is kind of Valentine's Day themed. I don't have any on hand, but I'd still have time to you know get something like that. So we'll see. That may get added. I didn't get a video of this, but I ended up making another garland for the mantles uh, using paper hearts and jute cord. I really noticed that these mantles are a bit larger than the one I have at home. Um, it definitely takes more to kind of fill it up. I found these pretty apothecary dishes on Amazon for a pretty good price and decided to put some Valentine's Day candy in them. What could be better than being all cozy here in bed, maybe watching something or reading a book and snacking on candy, right? And guys, I have good news. I did figure out how to get these words on the hearts using my laser burner. So these are available on the Etsy shop, these cute little conversation hearts. Um, of course, you have the choice of getting blank ones that are unfinished, unstained, and just creating your own hearts for Valentine's Day. But if you like the look of these, we do have them this year. As a guest here, you would get to keep all of these items on this tray. Gotta say, it smells really good in here right now. 
I even got these little dried roses. I found them on Amazon and they smell so good. And I didn't know you could actually make tea with roses. I wonder if you guys ever do that. Um, I thought they smelled good enough to drink. If that makes sense. So as I started setting this up, I realized the TV is a little bit lower in this cottage than Sparrow's Nest. So my square sign doesn't fit underneath the TV. And we of course can't have that blocking. So I'm not quite sure I might just make another sign with the word B on it and just make it a little bit smaller. Um, I think that should work. Or I could always move this whole display to Sparrow's Nest then come February and have what I had in Sparrow's Nest up here in Apple Blossom but also I couldn't use that square sign that I had used with the hearts, so not quite sure. Uh, maybe it would look okay underneath the TV, you know, just sticking out the bottom. But hopefully this will still give you guys an idea for your mantle at home. Um, just simple things like this can really spruce up a space. The pillows I'm showing you are available on the Etsy shop in case you're looking for a pretty Valentine's Day pillow. We do have some more pillows available on the Etsy shop that I don't have with me that would be fitting for Valentine's Day. Uh, we have some plain ones like plain red and pink that I always think look great paired with something with a design you know, for Valentine's Day or any other season. I hope I was able to give you guys some fun decorating ideas for Valentine's Day. I had a lot of fun making this video. I hope you enjoyed it too. If you'd like to stay in one of the cottages, there's always links in my description boxes taking you to the Airbnb site where you could book. And if you're interested in staying here during the month of February, I have a promo code to give you for that $50 off per night. And the code is LOVE2023. So you'd have to first book through Airbnb just how you usually do. And then you would message Dustin and Nicole. They are our property managers. If you would message them and give them the code, again, LOVE2023, they will give you $50 off per night for your stay. So hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, reach out to them through the Airbnb website. And again, all the links are down below in the description box. So what to do during the winter time here in Holmes County? Well, you could always walk through our many awesome antique malls. I've showed you guys in my videos. I love to do that. Like I'm a nostalgic person. To me, it's just fun to reminisce, walk through, uh, just brings back memories. I don't know, maybe I'm just getting older that I feel that way, but I've always kind of liked that really. And we also have some amazing thrift stores. I've showed you guys in my videos. I always feel like we have really good ones around here. I mean, it's kind of hit or miss sometimes, but um, it's just so much fun also to just browse. And there's numerous ones and they're open all through the winter. And we also have some flea markets. Some of them are closed during the winter season, but there's some that are open. And I'll try to leave some links down below in the description box of some hot spots around here. And then also some of my favorites. And of course, there's always some good dining in our area. Our area is known to have good restaurants. So I'll leave some links down below in the description box of that too. Uh, for myself, I often prefer maybe little cafes and I'll make sure to, again, put my favorite places down below in the description box. I keep saying that, but I just wanna make sure to share some of that with you in case you decide to visit the area and you're kinda of lost and not sure what to do. As always, I hope your day is going great. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.